So last time we defined the Jacobi elliptic functions and the way that we did it was we said that if we have an ellipse of this form, x squared over a squared plus y squared equals one with a greater than one, so something that looks a little bit like this, like a wide ellipse, then we can define trig on this uh, in the following way. We can say that this Sn of u and k, where k is the eccentricity of the ellipse, that's equal to y. Cn of u and k is equal to x over a. And then we define this new function, dn of u and k, which is equal to r over a. And uh, in the way that we defined u, I'll just remind you is that du was equal to r d theta. And so what I want to do in this video is start looking at doing calculus with these things, getting derivatives of Sn, Cn, and Dn derived. Okay, um, so what I'm, and the way the way that I'm going to do this, I'm going to look a bit more at this du right here, because what we what, what we want is you know dSn over du and that type of stuff. So uh, let's take a look at this guy first. Uh, so one thing that would be nice is if we could get theta here in terms of uh, x's and y's because uh, we know what the left hand side or, or we know what these right hand sides are. And, you know, if, if we could re-express like a derivative of with respect to u in terms of x and y, then that'd be easy to take. We, we would know exactly how to take derivatives all of the right hand side because the right hand side is in terms of x and y's. Uh, so uh, how are we going to get d theta in terms of those? Well. Here's, here's one thing that we can note. And this is a trick that you kind of already have to know. So tan theta, well, tan theta is what? Tan theta is equal to x over, or, or y over x. That, that, that's true for everything. Um, but if we hit this on both sides with the d, so what, what, what's d tan theta and d y over x? Well, that's gonna be, um, that's gonna be secant squared theta d theta equal to x dy minus y dx all over x squared. Okay. And recall that uh, secant theta isn't secant theta, secant theta is r over x, right? Uh, it's, it's, uh, it's the inverse of uh, cosine, so one over, you get x over, uh, one over x over r, you get r over x. Okay. Um, so we can, we can plug this in here plug this into this guy up here. And what we get is that d theta is equal to, well, what happens when we plug this in? We're going to get x dy minus y dx times, well, then what we're going to have, uh, so we see that when we multiply this over, this x squared is going to cancel out and we're going to have this r squared. And so that, so we have our d theta expressed in terms of x, y, and r like this. Okay, um, so what does that mean? That means that du, in terms of stuff that we know a bit better, is x dy minus y dx all over r squared. Okay, good. Um, and well, actually, well, and, and and plus this r out in front, right? So so actually, yeah, just over r because we have this r multiplying. Okay, great. Um, so we have our d uh, du. That's good. And um, there's one other relationship that I'm going to derive real quick, and, and this is going to be based on the constraint that we're on in the ellipse. And, and what that's going to be is that uh, if we do a d on both sides of x squared over a squared plus y squared equals 1, if we, if we d both sides here, uh, then what we get is that x dx over a squared plus y dy equals 0. And so what we've done here is we've effectively solved for dx in terms of dy just from the constraint that we're, we're working on in the ellipse. Okay, so and that, that's great because that means that we can express this du here just in terms of dy or dx. And that's, that's exactly what we're going to do. Uh, what, I'm, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to say, all right, well, in terms of, uh, in terms of just dy, what's du equal to? Well, du is going to be uh, x dy minus y dx and we know uh, we know from here that dx is equal to uh, it's equal to minus y dy times a squared over x and then this whole thing here is divided by r okay um well how can we simplify this guy well we can write it like this we can we can square this x right here uh and then 
you know, write it over x. And what we end up seeing is that this thing right here is equal to x squared plus y squared a squared dy, right? So plus plus y squared a squared, and then this whole thing over xr. But x squared plus y squared a squared, if we look at this equation right here, uh, we know that that's going to be equal to a squared, right? Because if we multiply this whole thing through by a squared, we have x squared plus a squared y squared, which is what we have down here, equal to, well, a squared, that's what we multiply through by. So this whole thing up here is a squared dy over xr. Okay, perfect. And so finally, uh, we can use this. So if we, if we have um, d s n du, that's going to be equal to what? That's going to be the same, exact same as dsn over dy with a squared and xr, like that. And so this right here is going to be equal to, uh, what's xr over a squared dy dy, right? Because sn is equal to y. And so this whole thing right here is equal to xr over a squared. So the derivative of sn with respect to u is xr over a squared. Uh, well, what's xr over a squared? Well, x over a is cn, r over a is dn. So this whole thing right here is cn dn. So we've done it. We know that uh, the derivative of sn with respect to u, or sn prime, is equal to cn dn. I'll box that because that's great. Um, Okay, so let's just take one second to look at this. So we know that in circular trig, uh, the derivative of sine is cosine. Um, so does that work out here? Uh, well, it does, right? Because we know that if we're looking at the circular case, dn is equal to 1. And so we would just have uh, sine prime equals to cosine. And so we, we regain back uh, what we would get in the circular case by, by, uh, through this generalization here. And so we know that this answer here makes sense. Okay, uh, what about cn prime and dn prime? Uh, well, you can get those using uh, the same type of, type of argument that I, did, I made here. And uh, I'm not going to go through it here because that's a lot of work. Um, but uh, if you work through it, then what you find is that cn prime is equal to exactly what you might guess, sn minus sn dn. And dn prime is equal to something a little different, minus k squared sn cn. And so this is kind of nice because uh, what you're seeing here is that the derivative of any Jacobi elliptic function is expressed in terms of the other two. So sn prime is in terms of cn and dn, cn, primes is in, CN prime is in terms of sn and dn, and dn prime is in terms of cn and sn. And so that's sort of a nice way of remembering these, knowing that uh, when you take the derivative of one, you get the two others. So that, that's a really nice generalization from uh, circular trig functions. Uh, so I think I'll probably stop here. Uh, in so so far, we've we, we've looked at you know the definitions of these Jacobi elliptic functions, and now uh, doing some calculus with them. The next video I'll look at understanding them a bit more intuitively and actually plotting them and seeing what these things look like. Uh, so I hope to see you there.